Welcome to our coverage of ASUG Annual Conference and Sapphire Now 2014. We're in the ASUG News Studio sponsored by NTT Data, and we're going to spend this time talking about SAP's UX strategy and an old friend called NetWeaver Business Client. I'm thrilled to be joined by my guests right now. I have Mike Ganjani and Sergio Chipolta from Hospera and Nisboy Neve from SAP. These are really some of the customers and from SAP leadership, the people leading the charge on the UX strategy. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, talk to me a little bit about your use case for NetWeaver Business Client, Mike. Great. Let me start off by first of all thanking you for having us here. It was such a great event. Uh, and I need to go back a little bit, give you a little background. I mean, about two years ago, we started a journey of implementing connected manufacturing at Hospira. Throughout, so for the first time we will be implementing the QM, WM, and manufacturing at Hospira. Throughout this journey, when we started the design, we came to, to, across a challenge that we needed to people online to be able to log on to multiple systems at the same time. And we did not want them to go to this application and log on for those applications. So we started coming up with a solution with that. As part of that solution, we came across the NWBC, of course. And then, and throughout this journey, we discovered that the NWBC wasn't only resolving that challenge for us, but they had other functions for us that we could certainly take advantage of. I think we, we realized that we can now bring the home experience to the office. And what we mean by that is just now be able to do activities, not just doing in the SAP GUI, but rather having a home experience for the users. Okay. You know, Sergio, you might want to add yeah. to that? So what we actually realized was there was a big gap between the home experience that users were facing at home with Google, with Facebook, with their application, and the work experience, which was completely different. So we kind of transformed our challenge from uh, you know, solving a problem to how to minimize the gap between the two experiences. So when we started looking at the network business client and the functionalities, we discovered that it was more than that. So there were functionalities like side panels, there were functionalities like floor plan manager, functionalities like power list, that basically complemented the set of information that was available to the user and minimized that gap. So the home experience was now closer to the work experience. That's so fascinating. So how did the users react to that? I think the acceptance was really good. The reason for that, perhaps one of the main reasons for that was that we got the users involved from the beginning. We did not come up with a solution, but rather they were involved in part of a design. Okay. You know, as far as since they were part of it, they were part of a design, it's naturally, it was something that they wanted it, and we did not have to sell. And that was, a, that was the biggest point for me, was that they having their imp input on our design, so it, they really felt that was, it, it was their solution, rather than IT just coming up with a solution for it. That's an yeah. excellent point. Yeah. And, and to bring in this boy here, you know, that really was the foundation of Fury, right? We had to work from bridging the gap between what consumers were looking at in their homes and what they were looking at in their offices. We heard some big news this morning. You know, talk to us about that, but also talk to us about what happens to SAP's old UI strategies now. Okay, yeah, first of all, Fiori, definitely a big corner piece of SAP strategy. And when we look at our overall strategy, Currently we have over 300,000 streams released to our customer, which is an awful lot. So we started analyzing it, like which screens are mostly used by most users there. And this is where we kicked off Fiori like a year, a year and a half ago. Last year we had already the big announcement there. A lot of customers jumping into it, actually buying that. And because of the high demand and most importance of user experience, today Bill announced thankfully that it's included in the existing licenses. So customers do not have to pay extra for it, but now I think it's very good for every customer to kick off user experience and reaching not only the typical SAP users, but reaching every employee out there. I think that is one important corner piece there. Then when we look at Fiori, how does it relate to NetWeaver business client or personas? First of all, all three of them are extremely important corner points of our overall UX strategy. But then on the other, they are somehow completely different. Fiori is first of all, it's a design paradigm, making simple, responsive, role-based, delightful, and coherent user experience, user interfaces there. Yeah. Then we have subscreen personas, which is a tool which is targeting existing sub GUI screens, making them simpler, adjusting them to your very specific user needs there. Yeah. 
So for example, we typically have very functional rich applications with many fields and tabs out of that, and you pick the ones which are relevant for your user. And I like very much what you said, Mike, it's about talking to the end users, understanding what is really needed there, and just bringing that on screen. You cannot do that alone in IT, you need yeah. to talk to the end users. Absolutely. And then, in a real life environment, we will have Fiori, we will have, you mentioned WebDimpro and other applications. So we want one single point of access for the end user there. Yep. And this is where the NetWeaver business line starts to hook in. It's one platform, one shell as we call it, which is hosting all these various applications, okay. giving the user one single point of access, a browser-like feeling and so on. Yep. And this is how we actually bring it together. We will evolve it further, talking about Fiori, there's this so-called Fiori launchpad to it, and we actually will converge it towards, but taking the customer with us in a transition part. So investing today in the NetWeaver business line is absolutely the right step to work on the conversion path towards the other environment, like Fiori launchpad and integrating Fiori. It's so very important because you know, you've already made such a big investment in this, and now to be told today that this is sort of the next generation. Um, do you feel like SAP is going to support what you've already invested in, and, and what's next? Absolutely, I think, I did want to add something to something this voice mentioned, that it was a very good point. One thing that we discovered, and perhaps Sergio also can talk about it, is that what we discovered throughout this journey was that it wasn't unlike in the past, and SAP we was a one solution for all, mm -hmm. that now that we can be the persona of Fiore and that we are a business client, that we can customize for different users, different experience. Right. Mm -hmm. Is the fact that now we, for our regular users, we can have an entirely different experience. For our super users, they probably need the entire NWBC, and then for managers, perhaps a Fiore. This now enables us to design for everybody rather than just having one solution for everybody, no matter what their needs are. You know, and that's what, the direction, yeah. what do you think? Absolutely, and, and, and it's really about the diversification of users. You don't have just one user type. You have a power user, you have an occasional user, you have a user that is really likely integrating with SAP. So, you know, you cannot spend time training the person. So, like, Fiori is, a, is an excellent solution from this perspective in all the approval, uh, for instance, processes. It comes handy, it's really easy and intuitive. As we, m me and Mike have talked for a long time, nobody has ever trained anybody on how to use Facebook. Yeah. So that's where we should go. Yeah, and that's the direction we wanted to go. With why? I mean, I don't recall that we have the people, you know, being trained on Amazon right. or being trained on Google. And our experience wanted to that we wanted to bring the same experience to the workspace. That to be able to give them that experience, that they be able to do this without any training. Where well, it shouldn't be any training. You know, you just do it, and that's what we have been shooting for. And hopefully, we're going to get there. You know? That's an excellent point, and certainly a lofty goal for going yeah. from you know a SAP GUI to hey, this looks like Amazon, or yeah. I just know how to use this. You're also using Fiore and Personas, or you're piloting them, rather, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. in your organization. Can you talk to me a little bit about the use cases there? Yeah, what I would say is, as we all kind of mentioned uh, before, there is a difference between the use case. So, for Fiore, it's going to be on manager, on every employee that needs to request uh, travel expenses, need to request a leave, or you know all the approval scenarios. That's the, the idea. Uh, but it's not just limited to that. That's a, a typical use case. On uh, uh, personas instead, it's a simplification of some of the key processes for more casual users or user, users that are not the classical power user that will feel comfortable in Subgui, but will feel more empowered in a Twitter business client with the co concept of a cockpit where they can have all the information in a single point and perform their function in the most efficient way. That's an excellent way to break it down. It's probably the clearest way I've heard uh, in quite Thanks. a while. Um, to that point, Nisboy, what do you think is most misunderstood about SAP's UI strategy still? Yeah, there's one piece, and I'm very happy that this is here not the case, because when we talk about SAP or overall user experience strategy, most people start with technology. What is your UI technology? What are the tools and so on? Then look at the application, and if they are lucky, they go to the application, and then it's it but it's actually, it's about the technology, the business behind it, so you need to build it, you need to be able to build it, there needs to be some business value behind it, so either you gain some money or you have somebody to, to pay for it, but in the end, it's about the human on top of that. So it's just the end user. So if the end user cannot use it or refuses to work with it, then it can be very good technology, it can be a very valid business case, but it does not have any value in the end. So that is the tricky part, bringing those three dimensions together. So therefore it's really, and that is what's most tricky for many customers really, for the IT 
getting to know the end user, talking to them, involving them in the overall process. And this is also, if you involve them in the end, they are engaged, so they're waiting for that experience for that application, looking forward to that, and also even more delighted about finally getting what they actually wanted and requested. That's such an important point because you know some of the major troubles that people run into with this if you don't start with the approach that you did is that users won't use it. You know, you went out and did this. But talk to me about some of the tips that you would recommend for approaching and working with the users to make sure that you design what they want. Okay, I, so my recommendation to the, to the industry would be is that do not approach it as a project. It's going to be something that you're going to build on. You know, I don't believe Facebook stopped building on the user experience, and then you shouldn't do that as well. And get the users involved. Get the users involved. If they own it, they will use it, and uh, they, they understand it, you know, and it's going to make the job much easier. So I, I get the users involved in the design aspect of it, and also, you know, don't assume that it's just going to do one project and it's going to be done. It's something that you're going to build on. You're going to build on, so start on something and start building on it. And that's my recommendation. That's what Bill said this morning, right? Simplification has no finish yeah. line. So yes, absolutely. You're yeah. going to be yep. continuing to do this. Well, thank you so much for this great conversation on this very, very important topic for everyone. And hope the rest of your project goes well. And it's really exciting stuff coming yeah. from, from SAP. So thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank Thanks you. for watching our coverage of ASUG Annual Conference in Sapphire Now 2014. You can see more of our stories on asugnews.com.